First Peter chapter five, verse eight. Be well balanced, temperate. How many of you know the word temperate means disciplined and self-controlled? Say discipline. Now say it like you're happy about it. Say discipline. Now say self-control. Self be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant and cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. I love this scripture. The devil's roaming around looking for somebody that he can devour. But the good news is it doesn't have to be you, and it doesn't have to be me, and it doesn't have to be all of you watching by TV at home. But what's the answer? The Bible says be well balanced. Balance is so important in our lives. It means you do enough of everything, but you don't do too much of anything. Let me say it again. To be a balanced person means that you do enough of everything, but you don't do too much of anything. Do you know that it's even possible to go to too many prayer meetings? There are people who just become so spiritual that they're not any earthly good for anything. There are people who just hang out in prayer meetings and Bible studies and they ignore their family and they ignore their marriage. And it's not balanced. I'm gonna say that one more time. Balance means that you do enough of everything but you don't do too much of anything. Well, you know that the fleshly parts of our nature is very excessive. We go overboard this way, and then we decide to fix it, so we go overboard this way. We're going to either do it all, or we're not going to do anything at all. And some of you, even your personality, can even lend to that a little bit more. You're one of those all or nothing people. Well, I'm the kind of person that gets very committed to whatever I'm doing, but I thank God that he's given me this message many, 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 many years ago about how important it is to be well balanced in your life. Do you know that if you just don't get enough rest, it can cause unbelievable problems in your life? Just something that simple. And we're going around having all these problems and we're blaming the devil and we're going in for special counseling, spending all kinds of money on medicine and you just need to sleep at night. There's not some big demon hiding out in your closet. You just need to go to bed. <laughs> and then of course there's some people that sleep too much. You need to get out of bed. Hallelujah. So be well balanced for your adversary the devil roams around like a lion seeking someone he may seize upon and devour. The only way that we can have balance in our lives is to understand the value of discipline and self-control that every believer has. I don't want you to ever say again, I'm just not disciplined, I have no self-control. You do have it because you have Christ in you. And you have all the fruit of the Spirit in you, and one of those fruit is self-control. I agree, it comes in a seed form in the beginning at the new birth, but as we water it with the Word of God, and we grow. How many of you know that as Christians we're supposed to grow? It's not very attractive to remain a baby forever. We have to grow as Christians. And I commend you for taking your time to be here today because that tells me that you're a serious-minded person who wants to get on with God's plan for your life. Normal people don't take a Friday morning and come to something like this unless they're serious about their walk with God. Now, maybe somebody drug you and you didn't really want to come at all, but however you got here, you're here and God's going to do a work in your life. And those of you that turned the TV program on this morning and you're still with me after the first few minutes, and it really won't do you any good to change the channel because I'm on three or four more, more other channels too. 
So getting away from me in the early hours of the morning is very difficult. God wants to change your life and he's going to do it through the word of God. So discipline and self-control are extremely important. And for some reason, everybody hates it. Oh, that's awful. Oh my gosh, I didn't come here to listen to her teach on discipline and self-control. I have problems in my life. <laughs> well, I'm sure you do if you don't want to hear anything about discipline and self-control. You probably have lots of problems and you're going to keep them. If you're not willing to listen to this. Now, I want to reiterate what I said last night because I know not everybody is at every session. And this is a very, very, very important part of this. Even though God tells us to be disciplined and self-controlled, we still can't do it apart from Him. Isn't it interesting that even what God commands us to do, we can't do just by willpower alone. So I'm not trying to push you over into some, bless God, I'm going to go home and I'm going to straighten out everything in my life and I'm going to this and I'm going to that, because I can tell you none of it will happen. But what you can do is you can go home, you can take your notes, you can sit down on Sunday morning or Monday morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning and Thursday morning and however mornings it takes until you get it. And you go over your notes and you look up all the scriptures you can find on discipline and self-control. And you maybe write down some areas in your life where you feel like that you need to come up higher. And then you begin to pray about it and say, now God, I agree that I've got areas in my life that are out of balance and I want to change. But I just want to say right now, right off the bat, that I cannot do it without you. I honestly believe with all my heart that this is a, a key that is missing for so many people in the body of Christ. Why do we go and we hear the word and 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 go to church and go to church and go to church and go to church and never change? It's not because we don't want to, at least most of us. I mean, there may be some people that don't care, but most of you, you're here today because you care and you're here because you want to change. But interestingly enough, I'm going to be honest and tell you that just hearing me teach you about discipline and self-control is not enough. It's part of it. It's part of the puzzle. But you can't leave out the main part, which is the Holy Spirit. I heard so many messages and went to so many seminars and I prayed and I cried and I rebuked devils. And yes, I made a little bit of progress, but I still had so many messes in my life. And when I discovered that apart from him, I can do nothing. And I started spending regular quality fellowship time with God every morning. I'm glad that you're here, but I'd rather you spend personal time with God. If you had to choose between being here and spending personal time with God, you and him alone, I'd rather you do that than be here. Don't make my television program your time with God. And I don't want to lose viewers, but I'm telling you that you need the teaching, but then you got to go to God. Your teachers, your pastors, they're not God. Quit having secondhand faith. Get your own faith. Get your own relationship with God. Well, my pastor says, well, my mama says, well, Joyce says, well, I'm glad you know what I say, but is it working in your life? So I feel like we get all these pieces to the puzzle. We go to church, that's a piece. We hear a sermon, that's a piece. We go to the Joyce Meyer Conference, that's a piece. We, you know, we watch a good Christian TV program, that's a piece. We read our Bible, that's a piece. But now you gotta go to God and say, God, I got all these pieces. And only you can make this happen. Learn how to wait on God. Learn how to just get in His presence and stay there, even if you gotta start with 30 seconds. Keep your mouth shut and say in your heart, I'm here as a bankrupt person. I have nothing except you, but you're more than enough. I ask you to put all this together in my life. Strengthen me, God. If you're married to somebody that's a real nightmare for you, but you know God wants you to stay, 
because you're believing. And let me tell you something, God doesn't just want everybody to get away from everybody else that's hard to get along with. God stuck with you and he might like you to stick with somebody else, thank you. We wouldn't be having this seminar today if my husband wouldn't have stuck with me. You don't get to run away from everything that's hard in life. That's part of a disciplined life. Sometimes you've got to stay somewhere that you don't want to be, even though it's not comfortable for you. And then on the other hand, sometimes you need to get away from some people because you have friends and even sometimes family members that are poisoning your spirit. Sometimes you just need to, need to get away from the gossipy lunch table at work. That's just something you need to cut out of your life. Like the Bible says, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. Well, if the lunch table offends you, get away from it. Come on. So I want to make it clear, and I may have to do this in every session, but I don't care. I know that I'm not going to help you if you just leave here thinking, praise God, now I know what my problem is. I'm going to become a disciplined person. Going to have 25 new rules in this family. We're going to do this at 8 o'clock, this at 9 o'clock, this at 10 o'clock. Why, that'll last about two days. Because you see, the flesh fires up quickly and fizzles out. Recently, I took a, one of those sparklers like you use on the 4th of July into a meeting. And I said, this is the flesh. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's my human version of a sparkler. James 4.17 says, to know what is right to do and not to do it is sin. Can I say that we are educated far beyond our level of obedience? Some of you have sat in so many church pews, your little bottom is flat. You've got middle-aged spread from sitting in church. <laughs> and you still sit with unforgiveness in your heart, bitterness, resentment. You're mad at somebody. You even came to church with the person you're mad at. You're going to sit in church, say hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus, sing I surrender all, and go home, man. I know, because I used to do it. I'd sit in church with Dave, mouth the words on the overhead, thinking if he thinks I'm cooking him anything to eat today, he has got another thing coming. Just because you say amen, that don't mean you got it. Sometimes the one who talked the most know the least. How many more times are we going to have to hear something before we get around to doing it? Well, I know I should do that, but. <laughs> well, I know I shouldn't do that, but. Well, that's God talking to you. Your heart is telling you, I know I should do that. I know I shouldn't do that. Then your flesh pops up and says, but I'm going to do it anyway. I hope I get by with it. Well, can I tell you something? You won't get by with it. And not only that, you're not getting by with it. Even right now, we pay the price for our disobedience. And you might as well smile. Galatians 6, 9. Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Here's the Amplified. Let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season, we shall reap if we do not relax our courage and faint. Now, can I tell you something? It doesn't take any special talent to give up. We all feel like doing that at times, including me. But it takes real discipline 
to not only do the right thing once, but to keep it up and 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 keep it up until you break the devil's power off of your life. It's not hard to do the right thing once. It's not hard for you to go out to the resource table and buy a bunch of that stuff and take it home and line it up on your shelves and think that makes you look spiritual. <laughs> but now, to listen to it or to watch it, you're going to have to discipline some of your time. You're going to have to carve out a piece of your day or a piece of your week for study. <laughs> study to show yourself approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. The only reason why people don't spend time with God is because they don't discipline themselves to do it. No other reason. I want to encourage you today to stop making excuses for anything. If you're not going to exercise, don't say I can't. Just tell the truth and say I don't want to. Now, don't make this hard on me. <laughs> oh, you're not going to talk about exercise and eating, are you? I don't want to hear that. <laughs> well, I just can't help it. If I see one chocolate chip cookie, I've got to eat 12. <laughs> no, you don't. You do not. You need to say, I will eat cookies if I want to eat cookies, and if I don't want to eat cookies, I will not eat cookies. Because I have discipline and self-control. <laughs> Keep doing what's right. Keep doing what's right. Keep doing what's right. Yesterday, I had the privilege of interviewing Dr. Paul Osteen on a TBN show that I hosted, and of course, He's the older brother of Joel Osteen. I'm sure many of you know that. And the Osteens are friends of ours. And I know that they won't mind at all me sharing this story on my TV program. <laughs> But Dr. Paul is a surgeon. And he was a very successful surgeon for very, very many years. And he said he came to a point where he felt um, a dissatisfaction growing on the inside of him, and he didn't know what it was. He thought, well, you know, am I having a midlife crisis? Is God wanting me to change jobs? You know, what's the situation? So the first wise thing he did was he did nothing until he heard from God. I said he did nothing until he heard from God. Just because you have some kind of a little dissatisfaction growing on the inside of you, that doesn't mean that you need to go and just take some kind of wild action What you need to know is, well, something's happening. You know, either God's trying to say something to me or, or something's going to change or, you know, maybe I've got a hormone out of place. Or I, you know, I don't know. How many of you know every time you feel weird, that doesn't even mean it's God. Sometimes it's just something goofy, you know. Maybe you ate too much sugar last week. I don't know. But he waited on God and it, it took a while. And then his father died. And he was, they were driving back from the funeral, and he said, I heard God say three things. Lay down your practice, move to Houston, and help. Now here this man has been a surgeon, and God's telling him, I want you to lay down everything, and I want you to go help. Well, they didn't even know at that particular time yet who was going to pastor the church. Joel had not been established in that position yet. There was several that might have been capable, and they wanted to make sure that they heard from God. And if I can backtrack for just a minute, when, when Paul was about 12 years old, his dad took him on a mission trip, and he said when he was... When he was standing on the soil in Africa, he already knew at that age that he wanted to be a doctor, but when he was standing on the soil there in Africa, the very strong thought came to him, someday I want to come back here and do medical missions. But then as he grew up and he went to school, 
he began his practice somewhere else and now you know God's asking him to lay all that down so he forgot about all the medical missions and and he just went to work there at the church as a helper and said that he was making 18 percent of what he was making as a surgeon now I want to tell you something there are not very many people in the whole world that will put themselves in a position of having less in order to obey God come on now not very many people will walk away from something amazing to do something that is less amazing because they know that more than they need anything they need peace with God can I tell you that more than you need anything you need peace with God and it took discipline and self-control for him to do that because there was nothing in his natural man I'm sure we have to learn how to live by our heart not our head if we'll live by our heart then we're gonna have long-term satisfaction but if we keep living off the top of our head doing what we think what we want and what we feel then we're never gonna be permanently satisfied so for six years everybody say six years. six years for six years he he just stayed there and helped not a day not a week we're talking about not being weary and well-doing <laughs> don't think that you're gonna do what is right one time and get over all the problems in your life you're gonna to have to discipline yourself to keep it up and 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 keep it up until you feel like you just want to scream and tear your hair out and then you're gonna have a little meltdown and then you're gonna get back up the next day and you're gonna keep it up and keep it up and keep it up and keep it up and keep it up it's right if you have a little mini meltdown once in a while God understands Oh, listen, I've quit and given up so many times. That's it, God. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I just quit. That's it. I just quit. Like, that's going to really impress God. <laughs> Honestly, I'm telling you the truth. One time I was pulling that and I heard the Holy Spirit say, Really? <laughs> I thought, Now, wait a minute. You sound a little too excited. <laughs> and then this was a thought that came to me I'm glad you're going to quit for a few minutes because that's the only time I get to work. Because I was in all kinds of works of the flesh trying to make all kinds of stuff happen that wasn't God. When you discipline yourself to do what you know God wants you to do. Well, six years he stayed in that position. And then somebody asked him to go to London for something. And then somebody else asked him to go to Africa for something. And he wasn't in the habit of traveling. Dr. Paul wasn't. But he thought, yeah, I feel like God wants me to do that. Long story short, he ended up in Africa assisting with some surgeries. And now he's at the point where he spends six months out of every year doing medical missions in Africa. So here, God speaks to him when he's 12. Now, come on, I want this to help somebody today. God speaks to him when he's 12, gets educated, becomes a surgeon, very successful, does that for years. What to the world would have seemed like a demotion actually in God's economy was a promotion come on are you with me but in his feelings he felt demoted and he had to stay there six years not a day a week a month six long years six times 365 days then suddenly breakthrough see some of you have a suddenly right around the corner if you don't give up but now you're still in that yucky discipline stage <laughs> you're still in that place where you're thinking my god how long am i gonna have to do this <laughs> when god when why God why <laughs> oh my gosh I said to Dave many years ago when are we ever going to come to the point in this ministry where we don't have something going on all the time that aggravates us 
And Dave, in his beautiful style, looked at me and said, never. <laughs> and you know what? That's been about 22 years ago, and he was right. Hasn't stopped yet. But you got to have the attitude. When it's all over, I'm going to still be here shouting. Because one thing I'm not going to do is quit and give up. I'm going to keep it up and 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 keep it up.